I really wanted to share with you the conversation that Bill had with me yesterday about his exceptional sighting that he had on Saturday the 24th of February 2018. And I tried to save that as an MP4 file, but uh, somehow Facebook wouldn't recognise it. So this is the MP3 that you'll be listening to playing from my computer. So I'm actually recording it playing from the computer and you're looking at a static image of Bill with my lovely little boy, Lakeland Terrier Cross Jacques, who left the planet in 2015, sadly. But anyway, um, this is the very field where Bill had his experience with the Nordics. And at that point, it was a a crop, massive crop, and uh, also a crop circle, just as they had landed with these two spheres that had um, been around him. Anyway, the the woods that you can see in the near distance there are Staunton Woods, Staunton Woods, Stoughton Woods, S-T-O-U-R-T-O-N, and they were the woods that uh, Bill was taken from as a child by the reptilians. So it's really interesting that this place in the the, um, black country, the West Midlands of the UK, has this uh, locale as some kind of frequency portal energetic place that allows this to happen. So I just wanted to share that with you and this graphic uh, you might not have seen before, but uh, although it just looks like a field and some woods, that's, that is what it is. And now, although it was remote in the days when he was a child in 1960, 59, 60, um, these days it's, uh, it's very popular with dog walking. Now, I've tried to uh, make the sound as good as I can, and I hope that you enjoy this. So... Um, Enjoy and do let me uh, have any comments, positive comments, please. (laughs) We don't need any of the others. And if you haven't read 44, the book that I wrote with Bill and published a couple of years ago now, uh, please do. And I'd be interested to have your positive reviews and feedback on that. And this is the first time Bill's had such a close up personal experience like this. Uh, for quite a number of years, although he's had sightings in in the perhaps not near uh, near past, but anyway, please enjoy. Here we go. This is Bill on the phone with his permission being recorded. Okay, so talking with Bill, twenty sixth of February two thousand eighteen. Phone call. Something happened on uh, the Saturday night, and this is Monday. So what was it? What what occurred? Right. Now you've got to remember. I know exactly where it's thought it is. Where Stoughton Woods are. You know the field we were in? Oh, yeah, back in Wordsley. Yeah, but actually that's Worcester. West Midlands, yeah. Yeah, that's mm. Worcester. Look, it's actually called in the village of Worcester. It leads on to Worcester. The field, you go down that track, the one field's in Worcester, the one's in Worcester. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know exactly where that place is from anywhere around that area, yeah? Yeah. So, I'm, I've got my daughter's till about seven, and about half past seven, Saturday night, the traffic was absolutely horrendous in Dudley, and I couldn't see a damn thing. Anyway, you know it's like when you've got roadworks in more places like Wordsley. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm coming down between King's Swinford and Wordsley. You've been down that road. I'm coming down there where we were, but I'm on the main road, which is about half a mile away from that area. Okay. I'm coming down, and there's no traffic coming towards me, so I've got complete view. Mm-hmm. And I looked up at the sky, and I saw a crucifix over... Thornton Woods, where I was took from as a kid, with the reptiles and everything. Oh, the reptilian event, yeah. Really? And the Nords? Yeah, that, that, all the events of that time, 10 till 11, whatever it was, by the ages, 10, 11, yeah. was in that area. This crucifix was right over it. What did it look like it was? Did it look like it was the clouds in a form? No, no, listen to what I'm going to tell you. I'll have to tell you. Go on. Yeah, I'll explain it all to you. The first thing I saw when I looked up, it looked just like a crucifix. And I thought, Christ, you know, like even me as a non-believer, look at it as some kind of Christ thing in the sky. Well, I looked at the road and looked back again, and it had started to turn. And I noticed it wasn't a, a crucifix. It was like a crucifix in the middle of it. You know when you put one of these that stars on, a, on the top of your Christmas tree? Yeah. It was like that, just it had five. Um, yes, like five points to it. Like a five-pointed star in the centre of this crucifix kind of structure. When I looked again, it was actually round. 
What, the crucifix was round? No, the whole thing was round. It was a round, solid object. But as I was coming down the road, I still had good view. And I was going past it, and I saw it stuck in the sky as a solid object and emanating from it. Now, you know we call it, she's seen this as well. She said it was pulsing. I said, well, to me, the light was emanating out of it. I got lots of little lights, blending into one light. He called pulsating, I called it something else. Okay. And that's what I saw. And it was a solid object. I saw it from the side as well. I could see part of the top and part of the side. And it, it looked like a solid object then. It didn't look anything like a crucifix then. It was a solid metallic object, light emanating from it. And all these lights blended into one light. It was like thousands of little lights. Lights I've probably never seen before. Most solid colours. Yeah, was it all white light or were there other colours? It turned into a light I can't describe. A pretty bright light, but I can't describe the light. Because it was pulled. I suppose it was right when she said pulsating, but I'll call it more emanating lights from inside. Yeah. Were coming to the outside and turning into a different light. If you had to say which direction the colour was going toward, that it might be pinky reddy or bluey, greeny, would you have any sense of that or not? No. No, okay. That's what I'm trying to say to you. No. It was a really bright light. I could still see all the little lights emanated into the bright light. Did you have a sense of size of going back to the crucifix? Did, was it just a little thing in the sky that you oh, saw? That was big. Right. Big. That's why I didn't even notice it. It was just massive. I'm talking half a mile away, it looked to it. You can tell how big it was. Probably a mile away, probably. If you, if you understand my logic, what I'm saying. Yeah. It's about two inches. That, that's big. So what was the sky like? Was it cloudy? Was it clear? Cloudy, it was raining. Okay. It was, wasn't anywhere near the clouds. It was right over the wood. And I mean right over the wood. So, so by when you say right over, are you meaning that it was very close to the treetops? No, not too close. No, not that close. So not near the cloud level? Uh, no, no, nowhere near the cloud level. It was right down. It was where, in fact, it was 500 foot in the air. Right. So when it looked like a, a crucifix, was that just for a, like a second, do you think? How long was a crucifix there for? Was, was that just a matter of a, a moment, a second, like when you saw it and then suddenly it's gone or...? Okay, so just momentary. Yeah, then it looked like a star. Five thing I told you about, you put on top of a Christmas tree. Yeah, the whole thing looked like a star. Yeah. Okay. Then, as I was going a bit further down, this happened within about like, two miles. I'm going two miles while this is going on. Yeah. Before traffic started to come towards me, I couldn't see it, I don't think. So you're talking about it being a momentary thing? Uh, as I come down, I went about probably 500 yards, say, 400 yards, right? and I looked up again, and it was turning, and then it looked like a solid object with these little all blending to the front of this, or back, or top, I don't know, because it was like, it wasn't egg shaped like the thing like that, it was just like one solid. Were you moving toward it? No, it was to the side of me. I was coming down the Stockton Woods and Wordsley were to my left, and I know the area so well, I can tell what, where that was, it was in the spot where I was took from, and that was much bigger for me, kind of it had to be for me, had to be. I mean, normally I'll say no, but this had to be for me. Had to be personal message, you mean? That's interesting. I would never think that you'd think that. Well, I don't normally. Normally, I, I dismiss it. Let, just going back to these structures and things, was it a, like a regular crucifix shape, the longer vertical with a shorter horizontal? I remember something. I was driving, shot me. The first thing shot me. And I had to look back at it to see what I thought I'd actually see what I was seeing. Understand. It shot me. Great crucifix. Right. Oh, and also, this was what the only called pulsating, or I call it an emanation of light coming off the yeah. top of all sides. Was the cross? It was that like white light. I can't tell you. Well, what made you see it was a cross? What differentiated the? Oh, you, yeah. Can I explain this? All right then. If something is not a glass, sorry, and it's in the see behind the light, you wouldn't see the, the glass. You'd only see what was inside it. Okay. That's the only way I can try to describe what I'm trying to describe. Right. So it was a kind of light that took the shape of a cross. It was a big round light, like a cross inside it. Initially, that's the first thing I saw. As, as I was, as I looked at it again, I was coming down. It was in one position. It didn't move. I was the one. Yeah. I was starting to see it from the side because it didn't move. Daisy. When I was coming down the road, it was fully in front of me. Yeah. As a cross. And I looked again, and because I'd gone a bit further, and it looked like a star. Okay. And then I went down a bit further, and I was seeing the side of it. It all happened in a, within a mile, a mile and a half. And I was doing about 50 miles an hour. Right. 
Right. Tom, well, I was going to try and explain to you. I lost. I was good. There's many things in the wrong one-way system, and I couldn't get back to it because there was so much traffic. Right. Every time I tried to walk a side street, I got cars behind me as well. Yeah. Nowhere to park, nowhere to turn. It was bloody horrendous shape. Yes. Yeah, so, what you're meaning is you couldn't get back to investigate it or have another look? Well, the time I got back, I couldn't find it again. Well, that's amazing. And you didn't have any other. No, I know what you're going to ask me. Missing time, anything of that? Not yet. I mean, not at the time. No. absolutely true. Many people will say, will attest to that kind of experience. Yeah. I believe that's happened to me. Yeah. It's not a certainty, so that's why I don't talk about that. Yeah. I only talk about certainties, really, but I believe to be certainty. Remember? Not that you recall consciously, but that's the thing, the conscious awareness of it, the fact that you're awake, you're driving 50 miles an hour. I've seen lots of UFOs in the sky. I've seen lots of them, but I've never seen anything that close without being took. Yeah. I've never seen anything that close without being taken. Does this have any meaning for you? signal for you to go visit that area again. Well, the funny thing is, the day before, Matt was here. He mm. said to me the day before. He's your musician friend. Yeah, he's from about 20 miles from there, but he knows the area, he's got a friend down there. And he said to me, this was the day before, came on Thursday, why don't me and you take a trip down there to all these places that you talked about in the book. Then I got there and I met my daughters and I, I, it seems to happen in a couple of days. It's like, since Matt said, we ought to go down there and have a look at these places. Are you going to? interesting to go back but I find that really fascinating because what came into my mind was not anything of particularly religious significance but that you have been crucified in your life And did she also see a crucifix? I can't remember that. It's seen exactly the same as I have, but we interpreted it slightly different. Oh, right, so she saw the crucifix. Where the art is emanating from. Yeah. That was the only difference we had. I know, but listen, you're speaking like you've seen a crucifix before. No, I've never. No, but Hillary has. You're telling me Hillary's told you she's seen a crucifix. She saw exactly the same thing, the crucifix, and when it turned. Right, okay, I'm with you. Okay, you're going to have to tell her about that. That's really interesting. Yeah, we spoke about it yesterday. Oh, did you? Oh, I see. That... Yeah, I couldn't get hold of you. We were talking to Hillary. Uh, yeah. It's on the road between the main road between uh, King Swinford and Kidderminster. Right. Coming towards, going past Wordsley, towards Stoughton. Right. Because Stoughton's quite big. It starts off the road because Lord Wood used to live in Stoughton, which is not the area I'm talking about. Okay. Stoughton's a strange area. It crosses over that road and goes towards Kidderminster. Okay. Uh, I should have explained all this to you, really. But that is absolutely fascinating. So, in heavens, a crucifix. What did Hillary think about it? She was just saying she's doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, she said she'd already put it in somewhere. Yeah. But as I said, the only difference between our stories and what we saw is she said pulsating and I say emanating. Yeah. Well, pulsating really indicates us coming forward and receding in the sense of a, a light coming in. So it, it's... Yeah bright and then not bright. An uh, emanation gives you the sense that there is a long continuous stream of something so there is no on off on off it's just one constant stream. Yes, okay. Well, well that is correct. That... Oh the phones are um, now beginning to go. I don't know what you'd call it. Don't yeah. But... Yeah. That's all right. Uh, maybe the word elliptical is is the best one. It's sort of not exactly egg, but a, a, a narrower egg shape. Yeah, you can call it back and front, top and bottom. Yeah. Okay. The, the shape it was in the sky, the position it was in. When that you perceived it as the egg shape, elliptical shape, was that also quite large? It was exactly the same. Right. So a fair size. Back of it was completely black. Oh, right. Really. Back of it was completely light. Do you think it could have been a projection? No. Right. I mean, I thought that thing outside the air said the Boeing was a projection. But it looked like a projection to me. Yeah, the 300 foot cone shaped object. Mm. But I thought it was from a fair. Yes, I know. This was not a projection. I'm absolutely certain this was a solid object. Okay.
Okay. So I didn't notice the spurs when I saw the crucifix first. Yes. So I saw that for a second and I, I looked at the road and looked back at it. Yes. Thinking, what was that? Because I mean, I didn't catch on straight away. That's something I caught straight on to. I, I looked and I went, what was that? And I looked again and I thought, like, holy shit. And of course I was driving as well. I didn't want to run into anything. Yeah, of course. You know, cause I'm, I'm good at 50 miles an hour. I can't slow down because I've got cars behind me. I've got none in front of me, luckily. If I don't have cars in front of me with the lights coming up the screen, I wouldn't have seen it at all. What sort of time of day was it? Half past seven. Okay, so it was already dark. So between half seven and eight, yeah, it was dark. Yeah. And the roads were bloody jam packed. So luckily, with roadworks being there, you, you get a stream of cars, and then you get none. And luckily, for that time I was going past word, there were no cars coming towards me. So this cross in the sky then must have looked really prominent because of the dark sky and the... Oh, it was absolutely in my face. Wow. It was in my face. It wasn't a little star in the sky. This was a big solid object. I didn't know it was a solid object at first until I looked at it from the side and saw what it was. Black, completely black at the back. Black as the sky. If right. it had been turned upside down, I wouldn't have known it was there. If, yeah. If the black side had been facing towards me... It's been reversed, yeah. I wouldn't have known it was there. So it was meant to, for you to see it, for sure. Does that have any meaning for you or not? No, not at all. Yeah. Unless I've done what I've got to do and I'm going to die tomorrow. I don't think so. That, that's how I look at it. Right, okay. Somebody's telling me, turn it off, come back, or, man, or come home, or no, I don't know. I know as much as anyone else, Joanne. You know, yeah, no, no. I, I know, know more than anyone else knows about anything, but I have seen things that make me open my eyes and yeah. wonder. And as I always say to somebody, I don't think any of us will ever know. That may be right. The human race was wiped out tomorrow. What difference would that make to the universe? Well, and on that question, yeah, we should on that. These questions are going through my mind constantly. So now that's why I'm deep think. Yeah, but I'm glad you spoke to Hillary. That's really interesting. And it'd be great that it will be on, on the Beams website as well. I was just going to say, when you put on Facebook, put, this is also on Beams yeah. website, you know. Yeah. It's not a bit of a boost because they, they don't get a lot, you know. Absolutely. I tell you what, I do believe Hillary. Something else happens and I forget the last one. Yeah. Because it can happen to me, you know. Yeah, I know. Uh, I see a lot of you guys in the sky because I'm out there looking. Yeah. All righty, my dear. I hope you're feeling better as well with things. Good. Well, I hope you found that interesting, folks. And um, as said, Hilary Porter of the British Earth and Aerial Mystery Society, along with her partner Ken Parsons, have put this information on their site as well. So if you want to go and have a look at the work that they're doing, um, Hilary is a, a, a long time experiencer and has had a lot going on with reptilians and you can see my interview with her on the youtube amash etn website and uh, anyway as i said i hope you enjoyed that please do um if you've had a similar experience it would be really interesting to find out how many other people i mean <clears throat> perhaps around the uk that have had them or anywhere else on the planet for that matter but two in england now hillary i don't know when hillary's was i'll have to ask her about that i cannot remember her telling me about that uh, event or uh, through our interview together but uh, i'll be catching up with hillary in the near future and putting out a new interview catching up with what she and ken parsons have been doing so i'll share that with you in due course in the meantime folks enjoy and please uh, read the book let me know what you think please send some positive comments and uh, reviews that would be absolutely lovely because we're all doing this work <laughs> um, free and gratis at the moment so uh, it would be nice if there was some little participation or acknowledgement of that anyway enjoy the rest of your time and this is Joanne Summerscales from the ET Newsroom over and out <laughs>